Yeah, hello friends. Uh, today we are going to start a new topic of microbiology that is Shigella. It's an important topic. Okay, so let us begin with this topic. Let us write Shigella. So guys, Shigella is basically NLF, NM, NLF, NM. That is non lactose fermenter and non motile it is non lactose fermenter and non motile non lactose fermenter and non motile okay and the reservoir the reservoir is reservoir is mostly the humans in shigella reservoir is the humans humans reservoir means mostly exclusively not mostly exclusively present in the human beings so human pathogen so what is the infective dose to cause shigella infection? Infective dose to cause shigella infection, it is 10 to the 100, 10 to 100 bacteria. So that means so much less infective dose you have. So it has very low infective dose, very low infective dose, very, very low infective dose. That is only 10 bacilli required to produce a shigella infection. It's okay. So uh, basically, what happens is, uh, you know, we have divided. You know, they have uh, the microbiologist. Once we are doing some tests on the shigella, they classified this shigella on the basis of serological properties and biochemical properties. On the basis of serological properties and biochemical properties, into four types. There are many types, but just giving you four types. Okay. So they divide it on the basis of let me write it more clear on the basis of serological or you can say biochemical properties into four types okay four types so what four types they divided sigella dysentery Chigella dysentery, Chigella flexneri, Chigella boidi, and Chigella soni. Chigella soni, dysentery, flexneri, boidi, soni. Chigella dysentery, Chigella flexneri, Chigella boidi, S soni. S dysentery, S flexneri, S poidy, S sony. What? How to talk at home with yourself? It's important. It's important to put it in the cerebral cortex. In those gray matter. How to put it in your gray matter? Dysentery, flexneri, boidy, sony. Dysentery, flexneri, poidy, sony. You know, who is an outlaw? An outlaw is someone who is not following the rules of the land, isn't it? If you say an outlaw, who is an outlaw? An outlaw, outlaw is a person who is not following the uh, rules of the land. So we have an outlaw in this family. This guy, thug's life. Isn't it? Da -da 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 -da. Okay. <laughs> As dysentery. So rest of them are good people why sir they follow they make our task easy of learning they all are manitol fermenter they all are manitol fermenter but this person is a not a manitol fermenter not a manitol fermenter okay but it's type one is catalyst negative but its type 1 is cat negative its type is cat negative okay now they will ask you a question which of the following is most common worldwide which of the following of the four is most common okay so how you remember is sony sony is the most common worldwide most common worldwide guys okay 
Now, I want to ask you a question, okay? Is Shigella Sony lactose fermenter? Is Shigella Sony lactose fermenter? If yes, then yes. If no, then no. Exactly. Exactly. This is the answer. Very nice answer. It is basically a late lactose fermenter. What do you mean by late lactose fermenter? What is the definition of late lactose fermenter? Yeah. Yes, uh, Supriya student. Yeah. Can you please tell us what is the definition of late lactose fermenter? So late lactose fermenter means what happens is this this Shigella Sony. Let me take it here. This Sony first when you put it in the uh, this lactose uh, agar, what happens is it will ferment. It will not ferment in the beginning. It will not ferment, but after forty eight hours, it changes that into a little bit of you know fermentation. Okay. That's why I remember this. But mostly if they ask you a question, what is Sony? Sony is a, it's not, it's a non-lactose fermenter. Okay. Just conceptually, I'm telling you, if they ask you more in depth, that which of the following is a late lactose fermenter, then it should be Sony. But commonly, generally, if they ask you a general question, out of the following, which is a, which is, you know, uh, uh, about this concept, is he a lactose fermenter or non-lactose fermenter? You should directly write that it is a, Late lactose fermenter, okay, or non lactose fermenter. You can put it under this, okay. So initially it is non lactose fermenter, but after 48 hours it is giving us a lactose fermentation, okay. Uh, this is done now. What virulence factor it has? What are the virulence factors? Okay, so let us talk about the virulence factors. Virulence factors. This S dysentery, S dysentery is producing a toxin that is called shiga toxin. Shiga toxin. This shiga toxin, what it will do, it will affect the 28S ribosomal subunit, 28S ribosomal subunit of 60S ribosome. And will finally decrease or inhibit the protein synthesis. To inhibit the protein synthesis. Okay, friends. By the way, it is also a, since it is a gram negative, so I can write it as having endotoxin. So it has endotoxin. It has endotoxin and produces sugar toxin. Clear? Okay. And think that, see, if, if it is having, you know, there were other best life who were producing, you know, who have a higher infected doses, you know, uh, if I talk about um, not even uh, higher, it is in that range. For example, if I talk about salmonella, the salmonella is having an infected dose of 10 to the power 3 to the 10 to the power 6 bacilli. That means you need at least 10 to the power 3, that is 1000 bacilli to produce a, um, to produce the, uh, you know, an infection of uh, salmonella. Like we we have for Vibrio cholerae, 10 to the power 6 uh, to around 10 to the power 8 best life for producing a cholera infection. So uh, here you have to remember in Shigella that it's 10 to 100 best life. It's very low in fact to dose is required to produce a Shigella infection. Okay. So if they ask you which of the following are having the low in fact to dosages, so you can write what? EHEC and Amoeba histolytica giardia. Okay, do we know that? Okay, let me make a box for you. So, uh, which others are having a low infected dose? Should remember this EHEC oh, uh, and amoeba histolytica. And amoeba histolytica, isn't it? MBS is dysentery. 
so antimimba histolytica and giardia so these these are low infective dosage uh, so you need only less or low amount of less amount of uh, bacilli to have this infection these bacteria okay now what what others uh, now this was about s dysentery which was producing this shiga toxin what are other members doing because we have other members also other members are producing shigella and terotoxin so other members remember like this okay other members are producing shiga and terotoxin this shiga and terotoxin think that it is like it is like cholera toxin like cholera toxin is having what subunits okay subunit a and subunit b a is for a subunit is active and b is binding that is we first bind and then we become active isn't it first we attach and then we become active like way it is shigella and terotoxin okay so let us go to the clinical features of giardia uh, sorry not giardia cl clinical features of shigella so clinical features number 1 the incubation period will be short ip will be around 1 to 4 days okay now initial clinical features will be remember this word initial clinical features will be watery diarrhea watery diarrhea fever vomiting watery diarrhea fever and vomiting okay next what will happen after this what will happen there will be bacillary dysentery what bacillary dysentery okay friends bacillary dysentery now if you are not able to treat this person at this point you are no we have failed to treat this person at this point of bacillary dysentery the person will land into complications the person will land into complications there are so many complications really you know uh, shijalla they ask you a question on this in the step one also so they ask you know uh, what are the intestinal complications like toxic megacolon we have perforations we have you no know, rectal prolapse in children uh, there is hypoglycemia hyponatremia uh, dehydration okay and there was another syndrome that was called ikiri syndrome ikiri syndrome or toxic encephalopathy that is also can be the complication another complication can be arthritis react to arthritis and if a patient is already having an hla b27 association uh, will manifest to us as react to arthritis or any sort of urethritis then right? um, and also ocular manifestations in the ophthalmology it can cause okay so i'll be writing for you don't worry just give me your review my way um so what things will happen if you are not able to treat this bacillary dysentery what will happen in the bacillary dysentery you will be going into complications so if i talk about children what will happen in children in children there will be toxic megacolon and rectal prolapse rectal prolapse okay is clear so uh, if i talk about the adults in adult she will be having electrolyte abnormalities electrolyte abnormalities what are the electrolyte abnormalities hypoglycemia hyponatremia and what else dehydration dehydration will be there okay another complication is toxic encephalopathy so one was this one complication i was not writing as this in the children second in the adults third will be toxic encephalopathy toxic encephalopathy is called ikiri syndrome Who can tell us something about Ikiri syndrome? 
Again, tell us about Ikiri syndrome. Guys, it should be on the tip of the tongue. Abnormal posture, cerebral edema, altered sensorium. Abnormal posture, cerebral edema, altered sensorium or altered consciousness. Altered consciousness, cerebral edema, abnormal posture. Up to down, down to up, play with the game. Altered sensorium, altered consciousness. Same thing. Altered consciousness, altered sensorium. Same thing. Cerebral edema, abnormal posture. Now going below to up. This is how I revise. Abnormal posture, cerebral edema, altered consciousness. Okay. So we have altered sensorium. Or you can say consciousness. Then altered sensorium, consciousness, and cerebral edema. Cerebral edema. Cerebral edema. Okay. Collection of fluid in the cerebral interstitium. And the posture will be abnormal. I hope you remember of abnormal posture. Why there will be abnormal posture, isn't it? It does not need any explanation. Okay. So what else will be having? We'll be having HUS plus HC. What is this? Hemolytic uremic syndrome plus hemorrhagic colitis. Hemorrhagic colitis, friends. Okay. Is it clear? Okay. Who will be producing these symptoms? By the way, it will be mostly produced by type 1. Why is it type 1? Because it is producing shiga, shiga toxin. That's why we also call this bacillus as type 1 uh, as dysentery. We also call it shiga bacillus. What? Shiga bacillus. We call it shiga bacillus. Okay. Yes, very right. Okay. Now, if they ask you, you know, they won't ask you that. Okay. I'm just telling you, these are the common things what will happen. Okay. There are also some things which happen in the, let me write for you, post-infectious phase. In the post-infectious phase, you can have, uh, you know, uh, if a patient, see, there are some genetic associations also. Okay. I want to make a concept for first year people. There is a genetic association also with someone for disease. Okay. Like we have uh, HLA-B27. If someone is having a genetic like constitution of this HLA-B27 and he got this infection. So after this infectious phase, once he has an infection, post-infectious phase, he will be having some autoimmune reactions. What? He will be having some autoimmune reactions. I'm telling again, I'm, I'm saying again this word. I'm saying if a person is having this genetic constitution, HLA-B27, which we'll be learning in the immunology part of this microbiology, those patients which had this infection, which have this HLA-B27 genetic constitution, okay, and they had this infection of Shigella, and in the post-infectious phase, they will have some autoimmune reaction. What are the autoimmune reactions? React to arthritis, urethritis, ocular manifestation. React to arthritis. React to arthritis. What else? Ocular inflammation. Okay, make it a small box, okay? Fine. So, uh, this is what you have to remember. Okay, this is what you have to remember. Mostly you have to remember these three. These three you have to remember. Star. This is important. Fine. So how will you diagnose? And this also hemolytic. This. Okay. So what is the lab diagnosis? Lab diagnosis will be culture is best. Culture is best. And the color. Culture is best, best three selective media. Or remember three selective media, don't write best because there are others also. Three selective media. Three selective media. Not three actually. Try to remember four. Let us remember four, okay? DCA, WBA, XLDA, and SSA. DCA is deoxycholate agar deoxycholate agar i have taught you i'm writing again for you deoxycholate agar wba wilson blair agar wilson blair agar xlda xylose lysine decarboxylase agar decarboxylase agar decarboxylase agar ssa salmonella shigella agar Salmonella, Shigella agar. 
சல்மோனெல்லா ஷிகெல்லா அகார் டிசிஏ டி ஆக்சி கோலிட் அகார் டபிள்யூபிஏ வில்சன் பிளேயர் அகார் எக்ஸ்எல்டிஏ ஜைலோஸ் லைசின் டி கார்போக்ஸ் லேஸ் அகார் எஸ்எஸ்ஏ சல்மோனெல்லா ஷிகெல்லா அகார் சல்மோனெல்லா ஷிகெல்லா அகார் இஸ் இட் கிளியர் ஸோ வாட் ஆர் தி அதர் டெஸ்ட் யூ கேன் டூ அப்பார்ட் ஃப்ரம் திஸ் கல்ச்சர் யூ கேன் யூஸ் ஆல்சோ எல்ஐசா பிஎஸ்ஆர் ஓகே யூ கேன் ஆல்சோ யூஸ் எல்ஐசா not psr pcr okay this also you can use coming to the last part of this treatment what is the treatment give any cephalosporin you can give okay the treatment is mostly based on what antibiotic sensitivity is antibiogram antibiogram whatever antibiogram tells me i will be treating in that way whatever the drug uh, whatever this organism is sensitive to i'll be treating that so uh, mostly we give ceftriaxone or you give uh, ciprofloxacin ceftriaxone ciprofloxacin okay friends is it clear so this is we have ended this topic of shigella next topic we will start with salmonella thank you very much and have a nice day bye bye